I want to go down a path with you today. Um, I try to remain relevant and current as much as I can when I'm preaching. But more importantly, I try to hear God. And I try to hear what the needs of his people are. Amen. Um, Mark chapter 5. We'll kind of break into a quick story uh, about a woman and what she was faced with. And Mark chapter 5, verse 25, I have a reader. Or do I need to read myself? Okay. Uh, I would prefer the NIV version. Thank and, you, Jesus. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Remember I said anything that you're going through as an ending. Amen. Let me reiterate that again. Anything that you're going through, it has an ending. Any suffering that you're dealing with, it has an ending. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse 30, at once Jesus realized that power had gone out, of, out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So we will stop right there. Jesus declared a word after she touched him. After she touched him. After she touched him. That she should go in peace. Why peace? Because she had been suffering for 12 years. Be free from your suffering, the master said. Yeah. Have peace. Go in peace. But also be freed from your suffering. Let's go to 1 Kings 17. You know what's funny? Yesterday I, I was meditating a bit and I wanted to uh, talk from this topic and I'll tell you where I'm going a little. But I was also conversating with ben Benny, that Benny that ministered, he ministered well yesterday by the way. Yeah, yeah he's, he's my brother, I love him so much. Uh, me and Benny we go way, way, way back. We were actually the ones that were the first in this ministry. And we are still here. But his ministration of the word was unique. He was passionate. Yeah, it was, it was very good. Yeah, somebody said it was beautiful. Amen. And the same scripture that I wanted to deal with today Benny got the same revelation to deal with it yesterday. Yeah, it only shows you that the Spirit of the Lord is at work. So we will look at 1 Kings 17 from verse 13 to verse 16. Elijah said, and Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. 
and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run, did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later. Let's stop there. Mm-hmm. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, this is your word. And these are your people. I want to thank you for your presence. I want to thank you for your approval. I want to thank you for your people. Father, today we pray that as the word is declared, as the word is preached, teach, that the hearts of your people, your sons, your daughters, your children will be receptive. That somebody may grasp from this word, a word that will shift them, that will revolutionize their thinking, that will catapult them to a higher dimension in the world of the spirit. Father, we pray now, Lord, that the spirit of the Lord will begin to move throughout this house and that you will open the ears and the eyes of your people today so that they might hearken and perceive what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Father, have your way Move as only you can. Break protocols. Break rules, O oh Lord. Break legislations. Break whatever needs breaking for the sake of your children today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stand up now, the invisible God that you are. Stand up for your people today. Fight for your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Consume some enemies. Oh, devour some situations. Oh, Father, we provoke the atmosphere. We provoke the anointing. We provoke your presence. We provoke the angelic activity in this house. In the name of Jesus, we cause a shift to happen in the realms of the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. Thank you, Lord. I'll put your hands together. As you take your seats, let's go. Come on, clap your hands better than that. Maybe we should have stayed in that time of just praising and dancing. You sound like you're tired. The, the title of my message is, I can't do this by myself. I can't do this by myself. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. For, for those that are in the sound of my voice, I want to inform some of you. And I also want to remind you that the God that we serve is a miracle working God. Do I have a witness in the house? He's a miracle working God. But what we have done is we have relegated miracles to the back burner. The ability that God has, it dwells on the inside of him. It's in his existence. It is what he's about. He does it. So that his children can benefit. Amen. He's a miracle working God. He specializes in things that people deem impossible. Do I have a church? He specializes in the unusual. The uncommon. Yeah. 
what others struggle with, he has no time to struggle with it. Amen. He's the all-powerful God. Amen. Oh, come on now. And for you to find yourself in a place, you have to be truly connected to this God. For you to find yourself in a place of miracle, there has to be a connection to this God. Yes. Am I talking to the church? Yeah. You see, the God that I'm talking about, remember on, on Thursday I preached about how intentional he is. Yeah. That he does nothing without doing it on purpose. I don't know if you, you see where I'm going. Yes, sir. So on one hand, I spoke about is intentionality, his ability to be intentional. Yes. Now today, I'm letting you know that you can't do it by yourself. Amen. I hope you're catching where I'm going with this. You cannot walk this walk by yourself. You have to live in an atmosphere of miracles. Amen. What's a miracle, Pastor Wallace? A miracle is the person sitting next to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle. Yeah, I'm a living, breathing, walking miracle. Yeah, you're a miracle. Amen. The fact that you got out of bed this morning, it took a miracle for that to happen. That car accident that tried to kill you, it took a miracle for you not to die. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. What affected you would have killed many people. But you got up out of it, brushed yourself off, walked out of it, and lifted your hands and gave God the praise. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why what affected your sister didn't affect you. What affected your brother didn't affect you. Yeah, that's why what your mother went through, you didn't go through it. Why? Because you're a walking, living miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are an atmosphere of miracle. Hallelujah. That's why they didn't like you at school. Because you thought out of the box. That's why your boss is fighting you. Because you don't think like regular people do. You see, the average eye cannot even understand who you are. They cannot comprehend who you are. The thing that bothers them don't bother you. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. You see, there are people that deal with minor issues and struggle. But there are people that fight giants and overcome. Am I talking to the miracles in the house today? Talk about it, sir. Am I talking to the miracles in the house today? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You see, for me, my God is big very humongous gigantic that's how i see him you know why because i'm faced with some obstacles i have some giants to fight so my god has to be bigger than these giants that i'm up against oh don't look at me funny now if you're not fighting giants it's not my fault if you want to see god in a small way you can see him that way but for me is bigger than anything that could ever stand before me. Oh, I don't know if you're here. You see, some of us have been through some things that will marvel your minds. Oh, yes. We have fought some demons. If we tell you about them, you'll be like, what did he do to inherit this thing? No, it's because of who I am. Hallelujah. And who I serve. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on now. The Bible says that there are next level people. Yeah, and we fight next level demons. We refuse to stay on the same level. Oh, no, we can't stay on the same level. Yeah, so we grow. We elevate. We, we, we are catapulted to higher dimensions. Oh, hallelujah. So we are determined to fight on the level that we are on. Oh, come on, yeah. And when we get to the next level, we'll fight some more. Why? Because the King of Kings, he dwells on the inside of me. Yes. Hallelujah. I walk in an atmosphere of miracles. But I can't do it by myself. That's why he's walking with you. That's why he's talking with you. That's why he's carrying you, taking you through. Because you cannot do it by yourself. Yeah. I don't know if you're hearing me now. 
Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. You can't do it by yourself. He performs miracles on accident. It's in his nature. It's in his makeup. It's in his ability to do it. He's a miracle working God. Oh, come on now, somebody. It, it, it doesn't require intentionality for you now, children of God, to experience the unusual. I, I don't know if you're hearing me. Why? Because your God is a miracle worker. It doesn't require intentionality for you to experience the unusual. It doesn't require that. Why? Because you're a son of God. You're a daughter of the Most High. And, and you were made in his image and in his likeness. I told you on Thursday, yeah, that you are like him. And if you are like him, then you can do the things that he does. But he's the one that gives you the ability. But you have to reposition yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory. It doesn't require intentionality. And I'm reminded in the scripture that I just read. The woman with this issue. For 12 years. I want you to listen to me. For 12 years, she's dealing with the same thing. Over and over and over again. But yet she's still alive. Oh, come on now, somebody. Yes. The Bible chose to mention her. She's still alive. Which only tells me that she wasn't the only woman at that time that had an issue. But she was the only one that was brave enough to encounter Christ. So that she would be delivered. Talking, sir. Am I talking to somebody? No, she wasn't the only woman at that time that was carrying an issue. The Bible just didn't mention it. But he chose to mention it because she overcame. And listen to this woman's determination. She said to herself. She spoke to herself. She spoke to herself. And in our, our modern day living context... If you are speaking to yourself, you're somewhat crazy. Yeah, don't laugh now. It's the truth. If I catch you saying something to yourself, I'll be like, or maybe you don't want to believe me. When Anna prayed and she was in the temple and Eli came, he said, hey, this woman mad. Why is she talking to herself? It's the Bible. It's not Pastor Wallace. The Bible says that. Eli said she's crazy. But for some of us, the reason why we talk to ourselves is because we don't want to go crazy. You see, you see, I don't have outside encouragement or external encouragement. For, for some of us, there's not people around us that can encourage us enough. There are just people around us that talk too much. They discuss your problem. So, we do not have outside encouragement. So, we have to turn on the inside and encourage ourselves. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, somebody. We have to turn on the inside and encourage ourselves. Because there's nobody to say, oh, go on, Pastor Wallace, you can make it. I got to tell myself I can make it. Yeah, I got to speak to myself. Before I come here to preach to you, I stand in the mirror and I preach to myself first. I don't know if you're hearing me. I have to encourage myself because I don't have enough people on the outside to encourage me. So she spoke to herself. Listen, she spoke to herself. An act of being crazy. Deemed by the world. She spoke to herself and she said this, if I could but touch, listen now, sometimes when you're dealing with secret struggles, 
Let me not rush ahead of my message. Sometimes when you're dealing with secret struggles, you can't tell anybody about it. You can't tell anybody about it. You go about your way. You go all by yourself. Secret struggle. Oh, if the church knew what I was dealing with. Ah, it would be a shame. I would be so embarrassed. Secret struggle where you have to talk to yourself. Say, Lord, if you don't get me out of this thing, I don't know how I'm going to come out of it. A secret struggle. A, a struggle that if anybody knows this thing, they'll be like, and Pastor Wally struggle with that. I didn't know. But how? He's Pastor Wallace. But for some of us, we have weaknesses. We have struggles. Yes. I, I'm being real with you. Yes. The difference between me and you is because I, is, uh, I hear God more. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Talking, sir. I, I'm right up your avenue. Don't, don't, I don't want to lose you, but I'm right there with you. Yes. Secret struggles. Yeah, secret things on the inside that you deal with. It's a private thing. It's private to you. And she had an issue. An issue that was private to her. So she couldn't tell anybody about it. And given the scenario that she's dealing with. She's in a group of people. So her issue cannot be broadcasted. It cannot be publicized. It cannot be spoken out loudly. It's a private issue, a private struggle. Hallelujah. Yeah. It cannot be exposed to the natural eye, to the average eye. And you know who you are as church people. You hear about something in the church and you'll be like, whoo, Jesus, I better get up out of this church. <laughs> but my father always says this, if you're looking for a perfect church, you should get everybody outside of the building. Get the key for the front doors. Get everybody out, including protocols and ushers and serving members. And then lock the door and don't get in. So you'll have an empty church. Because there's no perfect church. There's no perfect situation. There's no perfect person. So don't ever expect outside encouragement to come when you're faced with a private struggle. Now let me give you some nuggets now for those that are taking notes. Yeah, I, I got some of you where I want you. Yeah, don't expect outside encouragement to come when you're dealing with a private struggle, a secret struggle, something that is sensitive. Something that you can't tell your mother. You can't tell your sister. You can't tell your closest friend. This woman was dealing with that. I hope you're hearing me. I hear you, sir. But she said this. I've got to encourage myself. Amen. I've got to get to Jesus. I've got to get to that place where if I can only just touch him. The hem of his garment rather. Am I talking to the church? Oh, come on there, somebody. You see, people that don't know you, they don't understand the power of self-talk. Before this woman touched the Lord's garment, she spoke significant words to herself. I don't know if you're hearing me. She had to convince herself to do it. Because she went through a series of people that let her down. I don't know if you hear where I'm going with this. She encountered people that disappointed her. People that were not reliable. People that exploited her. I hope you're hearing me. 
people that took her money and did not give her what her money was worth. Or rather, give her what she paid for. You know who you are. You'll be like, I need a refund. <laughs> After all, I paid for this. I spent 12 years going to the doctor. And doctor, you didn't do anything for me. So can I have my money back? She's wrestling with these things in her mind. She's dealing with a private issue. And you know women are private. Especially along these lines. Nobody should know. I, I'm going there. Don't worry. Don't, don't get too hasty now. Let me handle what I need to handle. Hallelujah. She spoke to herself. She said, and the funny thing is, this woman doesn't even have a name. Listen. Not only that, Jesus was not even concerned about this woman. If you read the story, you will see at the top of the story, he was going to Jairus' house. Am I talking to somebody? You see her determination. He's going to Jairus' house. She's not in the picture. He doesn't even know that she exists. Her name is not mentioned. He's headed to heal Jairus' daughter or raise her from the dead. She's not a part of the program. She's not even in his agenda. Oh, am I talking to somebody? She's not in his agenda. She's not a part of his scheduling or on his itinerary. She's not there. She's not mentioned there. But she spoke to herself. She spoke to herself. She said, if I could but not touch the hem of his garment. She didn't even say, I need him to touch me. Oh, wake up now. She didn't even say, I need him to touch me. She said, if I could touch his garment, I don't need to touch him. I need to touch what's touching him. I don't need to touch him. I just need to touch something that's touching him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She was determined. If I could touch him. So, she pressed. She pressed her way to him. I'm going somewhere with this story. I'm talking about you cannot do this by yourself. Okay? But it requires your participation for a miracle to happen. You're hearing me. She pressed her way through the crowd. And some of you would have given up. I certainly would have probably given up. I would have given up. Why? Because what we do is we allow people to affect our natural environment. And so many times we allow people to block us from seeing Jesus or to block us from going to the Lord or to block us from receiving anything from the master. You know who you are, church people. She pressed through the crowd. She was relentless and she decided that nobody is going to stop me or block me or prevent me from getting my breakthrough. Nobody will stop me today. I've had enough of enough of this thing. I went through too much to let people stop me from getting to the Lord. Amen. I'm talking to somebody in the house that's, that's been God. offended by one of us. And you know how we are sometimes in our positions. We act all like that we are bigger than the position. Yeah, you can put your hands together right there. 
The reason why some of you are not clapping is because you know I'm talking about you. Or not only that, you know the person that I'm talking is sitting beside you. Or you know the person that offended you is next to you. So you're afraid to say something. But it has happened. Where we allow church people to block us from receiving from Jesus. To stop us from getting to the Lord. You should make it up in your mind. Nothing and no one. Nothing and no one has that enough power to prevent me, to stop me, to block me from getting to Jesus. I don't care who you are. Nobody's going to prevent me or block me or stop me from getting to my miracle. I came here for that reason alone and I'm not leaving without it. So you can make your face up. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't care. I've got a miracle with my name on it. Amen. Hallelujah. And no power on hell will prevent me from getting my miracle. I'm determined. Yes. Oh, you'll be amazed about people in the church who will let people stop them. From getting their breakthrough. You meet them out there and you'll be like, I haven't seen you in church for a while. Oh, you know that sister? Yeah, that one that stands at the welcome desk. She didn't greet me properly. Or she didn't acknowledge me properly. She didn't even know my name. Your name? A greeting. So you stop coming to church because somebody didn't greet you. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you will be like that. Oh, no. Oh, you know, I, I don't think I'm coming back. Because I thought he loved me. Yeah. I thought he loved me and he told me that he loved me. Yeah. And the moment we got together... And that happened. He walked away and he doesn't love me anymore. And he said that he would marry me. Yeah, yeah. He said that he would marry me. He promised to marry me. Yeah, that I will be number one on his list. And now things have changed. And I can't show my face in the church because I'm embarrassed. You're letting what somebody did to you stop you from getting your blessing from God. So I'm not coming back. Because I'm offended. They offended me. Oh, they took me up out of my seat and said I had to give my seat to somebody else. Me of all the people. Me, I've done so much in this church. I'm the first one here and I'm the last one to leave. Yeah. Out there they take me up out of my seat. Yeah. And give my seat to somebody else. Me, I don't even want to talk to any one of them. Do they know who I am? Hey. I'm the chief of all chiefs in this house. Yeah. I open the doors and I shut the doors. How oh, dare they take me up out of my seat. Yes, a seat. Most of the nights I'm standing at the back. Yeah, yeah. Don't but I'm still here preaching. Yeah. Preaching to you so that God can bless you. Yes, sir. And you're worried about a seat? Help a us. A chair? Help us today, sir. Ah. Oh, you're not coming back because they took you up out of your seat. Oh, wow. A chair. Oh, gee. Uh, yeah, I know I'm touching some things. I'm just taking my time with you today. Yeah, you can't do it by yourself. You need people. Oh, you see, the people on this side, they're not clapping now, you know. They're suspects on this side. Yeah. A chair. Oh, Jesus. 
a chair. I didn't know a chair was that important. I thought being in the house was more important than. You know what David said? I'd rather be a doorpost in the house of God than to sit in the tent of the wicked. Than to sit in the tent of the wicked. Than to have a seat in the tent of the wicked. So you're fighting for a seat. You know where you have placed yourself? I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't know a chair could be that important. Wow. I probably need to do more research. But she pressed herself. She pressed through people's comments. She pressed through people trying to block her. She pressed through people offending her. I don't know if you're hearing me. She pressed through unnatural circumstances. Because it's not, it's not natural for her to be outside. Given the issue that she's faced with. She had to press through her thoughts. Her own thoughts. Not just the thoughts or the words or the comments of other people. She had to be strong enough on the inside. Strong willed on the inside. Hallelujah. She had to tell herself that self, you are going to get your miracle today. Amen. Oh, am I talking to somebody? I'm talking, sir. You see, people will always offend you. If you're looking for offense. Yeah. People will always say things about you. If you're listening to what they're saying. Notice I didn't say they stopped. They will always say something about you. If you're listening to what they're saying. You see, my ears are not there. I don't really care about what people say. I'm more concerned about where I'm going. Yeah, and who I need to help. My assignment and my purpose. My calling. I'm more concerned with what God will have me to do. Oh, come on now. I'm concerned about receiving my miracle. You, you see, while I'm preaching to you, I'm also preaching to myself. Yeah, because I've encountered people that will try to tell you, oh, Pastor Wallace, you don't like me. I'm like, I didn't know that this was a like issue. I thought it was an heaven issue. Where I'm, I have to make sure that you get to heaven. There is nothing in the contract that talks about us liking each other. Oh, come on now. I love you. You're my brothers and you're my sisters. But there's nothing in the book that says I'm supposed to like you. No. No. You see, I'm coming on this side. There's somebody on this side that I need to talk to. No, I love all of you. You're my brothers and my sisters. But there's nothing in the word that says I should like you. It says I should love you. Why? Because the word knows that we are false. And we will say things to each other that will make us angry at each other. So I ought to love you irregardless of what you say about me. I have to love you irregardless of what you do to me. But it doesn't mean that I have to roll with your crew. I have a right to love you. The Bible commands me to do it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. But at the end of all of this, I'm gone. You're gone your way and I'm gone my way. I don't know if you're hearing me. You understand me? I'm helping somebody. I'm, not, I'm trying not to point fingers, but I'm helping somebody in this. I'm helping somebody now. Yeah. I don't have to like you. But I love you. Uh, because I, I, I'm displaying the love of God. I can't say I love God if I don't love you. But you know you have some ways and those ways don't agree with the ways that I have. So I have to still love you. 
and then help you in the ways that you have. Not talk about the ways you have. Not talk about the things you do. But love you enough to pray for you. Love you enough to encourage you. Love, love you enough to speak to you in the right manner. I don't know what's going on with the people in the front. They're just shaking their heads. <laughs> Maybe I'm talking to only the people behind them. She pressed, even though the master was on his way to Jairus' house. She pressed, knowing that she wasn't even recognized. Yeah, she wasn't noticed. You know how we are. When you walk into the church, if five people don't call to you. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. If you walk through the door and five people don't call to you, you'll act like, Oh, they don't see me. Let me turn it up. <laughs> I've seen it. She wasn't concerned about her physical appearance. She wasn't concerned about how she looked. Or how the people around her looked at her. That part is more important. She wasn't concerned about how the people around her looked at her. She wasn't. She was more concerned about the end result. She pressed her way through the crowd. And the Bible says this. Oh, I'm loving my notes today. <laughs> she touched him. Whilst Jesus was on his way to Jairus' daughter's house, he's walking and he stops. And he says, who touched me? Now remember, her initial goal was to touch the hem of his garment. That was her initial goal. She wanted to touch something that was touching him. The initial goal was to touch something that was touching the master. But then the Lord's statement is, who touched me? And you know the story that the disciples began to say, is the master crazy? What is he talking about who touched me? There's a bunch of people touching you. You are in a gang of people. You know how popular you are. Yeah. How are you asking who touched you? The disciples were confused. And he said this word, I felt virtue go out of me. I felt virtue go out of me. I felt virtue go out of me. Listen. He didn't say I sent virtue out of me. He didn't say, I'm sending her healing. I'm sending virtue to heal her. He said, I felt it leave my body. Yeah. I didn't command it to leave. I didn't send it to go. No. It left my body. Yes. Who touched me? He asked. Because virtue has left me. He wasn't even aware of the woman he wasn't even aware of the miracle he had to ask about it yeah i, I don't know if you hear what, what, what i'm saying we hear you. I, I don't know if you truly hear what i'm saying he wasn't aware that she was even there he wasn't aware of this woman he wasn't even aware of her situation there was no time to even process what happened all he felt was her faith connecting to who he is. Amen. 
And even though there was a lot of people touching him, he was conscious enough to know that there is somebody here that touched me in a way. Yeah, that caused something on the inside to leave my body and to enter them. Yes. I don't know if I have a witness in the house. Yes, sir. And even though there was a lot of people touching him, there was a touch that produced faith. Yes. That caused Jesus to respond. Yes, yes, yes. If you remember the story, he, she wasn't even in the picture. She wasn't a part of the crew. She wasn't on the schedule. She was not in the itinerary. The agenda was already made and her name was not there. But she touched him. And Jesus is saying there, I know a lot of people are doing the same thing. And getting the same result. So a lot of people might be touching the Lord. Not in the correct way. Yeah. Come on, Pastor Wala, she's teaching. A lot of people are there touching on the master, touching and you are touching and you are touching, mm -hmm. but not in the correct way okay. that will produce your miracle. miracle. I hope you're taking notes. Not in the way that will get you a different result. They're touching Jesus the same way and they are achieving the same result. Nothing is happening for them. But for this woman, Jesus is saying, it doesn't work the same way when faith touches me. When your faith is connected to Jesus, the results are automatic for your miracles to happen. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He initiates and he orchestrates miracles. Hallelujah. She touched him at a point in her life when she was in desperation. Which tells me that at the end of your desperation, that is the right time and place for you to connect your faith. To the power that Jesus carries. Amen. She had no time in giving up. You see for some of you there is a next level that is about to happen. There is something great that is coming. And you're fighting and you're dealing with some issues now. That you can't even talk to anybody about it. You're faced with challenges and trials and situations and circumstances that you can't even tell your best friend. You cannot tell anybody about it. Sometimes you don't even know how to talk to the master about it. Because it becomes so sensitive to you that you yourself are worried that if I even open my mouth and say this, somebody just might hear what I'm dealing with. But she didn't care about that. In this season, you cannot care about that. You cannot care about what people want to say about you. You got to do the work that God has called you to do. Amen. You got to do the assignment that is set before you. If it is that you want to receive your miracle, Amen. you can't listen to what people say. You can't listen to what people say. You got to do what you're supposed to do because it's your miracle that you need. Am I talking to the church? Talking, it's sir. your miracle. It's not their miracle. It's your 12 years of waiting. It's not their 12 years. It's your situation. It's your testimony. It's your breakthrough. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. You have to grab hold of it. You have to lay hold of it. You have to possess it. You have to go after it as hard as you can. You can't be worried about what people are saying. You can't be worried about what people are doing. Oh, this one doesn't want me around. Who cares about this one? What about you? God wants you around. And he wants you to stand up. You can't be like, they're not recognizing me. They're not noticing me. No, God recognizes you. Amen. God notices you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And the end result is your miracle. Your miracle that will happen for you. Amen. So stop looking at people. Take your eyes off of the creature and put your eyes on the creator. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a living, walking miracle. Take your eyes off of those, the naysayers, the ones that want to tell you things, the ones that want to put you down, the ones that want to tell you, oh, you can't make it. Oh, you should do it like this. Oh, no, you shouldn't do it like that. Listen to the voice of God. Oh, am I talking to somebody in the house? Listen to the voice of God. Listen to him speaking to you. Follow that voice. Trust that voice. Hallelujah. That voice is what took you here. For many of you, you came here because the Lord told you to. Don't let nobody in this house tell you otherwise. Hallelujah. You're important. You have value. Yes. There is something here for you to do. Yes. There is somebody that God is sending that yes. needs to hear what you went through. There's somebody that God is sending that needs to hear what you overcame yes. so that you can help them. Don't let anybody, anyone, nobody tell you or try to tell you that you are nobody. You are a child of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says from the time of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Violent take it by force. The one that wants it takes it by force. The one that needs it takes it by force. You're not asking for it. You're taking it. You're taking it. You're taking it. You're not asking. You're demanding. You're taking it. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Oh, take it by force. She took it by force. Even when Jesus didn't even know she was there. Jesus' eyes was not even on her. And sometimes you can feel like that. That the Lord doesn't even recognize me. He doesn't even know that I'm here. He doesn't need to recognize you. You just need to be in his presence. Oh, I spoke something right there. He doesn't even need to say something to you. You just need to be in his presence. And touch something that's touching him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Touch the anointing. Touch his power. Touch his presence. Touch his altar. Hallelujah. Connect with something. Connect with someone. Connect in the presence of God. Oh, am I preaching to somebody today? Yes, sir. Uh, don't let your mama, don't let your papa, don't let your brothers, don't let your cousins, your aunts or your sisters, don't let anybody stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Let nobody stop you from receiving your miracle. Yeah. It belongs to you. It's yours. It's yours. How determined are you? How relentless are you? How tenacious are you? Are you a fighter? Or are you a person that's going to give up? I refuse for you. You shall not quit. You shall not fail. You shall not fail. It is your portion to win. Victory is your portion. It is your portion to win. It is your portion to win. Victory is your portion. Grace is your portion. Elevation is your portion. Next level is your promotion. Promotion is your portion. Oh, somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive. Oh, somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive. She pressed her way through. 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 She, way through. she didn't mind the crowd. She didn't mind the people. She pressed her way through. She pressed her way through. She pressed 
and she pressed uh, until she received uh, a breakthrough, her healing, her uh, miracle. Yeah. Oh, could you stand to your feet? And for the next two minutes, begin to pray. Begin to pray for the next two minutes. Begin to call on the name of Jesus. Somebody lift your voice and pray for the next two minutes. Just speaking tongues in this house. She pressed her way. She pressed her way through. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody needs to look at me. Yeah, I know that I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle. I am a miracle. Somebody needs to testify. I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I'm a living, breathing, walking, talking miracle. Hallelujah. I'm a miracle. Yeah, I'm a miracle. For me to be here, it's a miracle. For my business to survive, it took a miracle. Hallelujah. For me to get out of bed this morning, it took a miracle. It took a miracle for me to get my healing. It took a miracle. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to know, if you want to know what a miracle means, take a look at me. If you want to know what a miracle is, take a look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not sure, you can go to the dictionary and you can type in the word miracle right there you see a picture of me right beside the world miracle i'm a living breathing walking shouting screaming miracle you are a miracle and let nobody tell you otherwise you're a miracle you're a miracle the grace is upon you favor is upon you you're walking talking breathing an atmosphere of miracles i'm a miracle i'm a miracle i am a miracle oh thank you jesus Oh, thank you, Jesus. Go on, go ahead and pray now. Just lift your voice and pray. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle. I am a miracle. I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle. L -l -l Listen to this. It took a miracle for her to overcome. Yes. Something that doesn't happen naturally. Yes. A miracle. Oh, come on, somebody even in the face of adversity unrecognized hallelujah unnoticed nobody looking at her she became the miracle at that moment yes. a miracle means simply this yes. that you are an exception that's one Amen. a miracle means also deviation it has to go your way. Yeah. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? 
it, it has to go your way deviation a, a miracle means rule breaker for me the rules don't apply oh, hallelujah because I'm a miracle and because my God is a miracle worker rules don't apply to my situation because of me it will break chains break protocols shift things for me so that I can overcome rules don't apply for me a miracle means that I'm a pattern shifter I break cycles yeah I don't go around in circles I break cycles I'm a pattern shifter I don't know if I'm talking to somebody I'm a pattern shifter hallelujah why do I shift patterns why do I break cycles this is what it means it was going a certain way until it got to me Yay. Hallelujah. it was going a certain way until it encountered me yeah. I'm the curse breaker in my family yeah. I'm, the, I'm the one that's breaking the cycle in my family yes. I'm the first to be married yes. the first to own a business yes. the first to have a visa yes. oh hallelujah the first to have children yes. yeah in marriage oh I don't know if you're hearing me I'm a curse breaker I'm a miracle oh hallelujah it was going a certain way until it got to me yeah I break cycles I break curses I'm a curse breaker in my family you're a curse breaker in your family you are a miracle in your family God chose you to be the deliverer of your family Amen. yeah check check the record you're the first one to do this you're the first one to do that yes yes God chose you so it had to end it was going a certain way but when it got to me it was over oh come on you gotta tell yourself it was over when it got to me oh hallelujah yeah There is miracles standing in this house. Come on now, somebody. Uh, not just one miracle. Not just two many miracles. Not just three or four or five. There's a lot of miracles standing in this house. Yeah? You are the miracles that are in this house today. Oh, come on now, somebody. So don't act as if nothing is happening you are a miracle you are walking in an atmosphere of miracle now now listen to this a miracle is simply this when god makes something happen that shouldn't happen that couldn't happen that wouldn't happen unless he made it happen oh, oh let me say it again probably you didn't catch it a miracle is something that shouldn't happen that couldn't happen that would not have happened until God or unless God made it happen oh you can put your hands together right there so you can't regulate me because of my age I'm talking to somebody now you can't regulate me because of where I'm from my community you can't regulate me because of where I'm placed in my family you certainly can't regulate me because of the school that I went to or the career choice I chose you cannot regulate me because of where I'm from which country which community which state which city which town which province you can't regulate me to that i am a living walking miracle so my age doesn't count where i'm from doesn't count what school i went to didn't count hallelujah the community that i came from doesn't count hallelujah 
And just because I'm by myself, that doesn't even count either. Hallelujah. I know who I'm walking with. I know who's surrounding me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So you're an exception. Can I make you believe this today? You're an exception. God is waiting for you. Miracles. God is waiting for you. Miracles. All of you miracles. To make an impact. That will produce more miracles. In the lives of the people that are waiting for you. Because one miracle leads to another miracle. Yeah, and to another miracle. And to another miracle. Yeah, until somebody starts testifying about the miracles that they experienced because they encountered a miracle. Am I talking to somebody in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to God. I'm a chain breaker. I'm an exception. I'm a rule breaker. I break protocols. I'm a pattern shifter. I disrupt and break cycles. I'm a miracle. It was going one way. It was going in a certain way. Until it got to me. Until it got to me. Cancers were destroyed. Until it got to me, healings were wrought. Until it got to me, people shall be delivered. I am a curse breaker. I am a miracle worker. I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I was called to be 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 a miracle. For the next two minutes, lift your voice and pray. Come on, let's lift your voice and pray miracles.